Oh, crap. Well, I guess you got really up close and personal. Let's clean. Hi, everyone, and welcome back. We are now at week four of the 52 Sunday Dinners Project. If you've been here before, you know what's going on. If you haven't, welcome. My name is Ashley. I'm a registered dietitian, and I have a love for everything vintage and food. If you'd like to know a little bit more about the whole purpose and mission of this project, go ahead and refer back to week one. I give a little more of a thorough explanation there about what we're trying to accomplish with this. And with that, here's what we're having today. For this fourth Sunday dinner, we're starting with a tomato bisque, then having Swiss steak with sauce, mashed potatoes, creamed peas, hot rolls and butter. Then for our salad course, we'll have Waldorf salad. And for dessert, Bavarian cream and lady fingers. And of course, you know that we're having coffee. I am so blown away by all of the support that you guys have shown since last week's video. I was a little bit nervous about what the reaction to my needing to have a bit of a dietary change would be. Now moving forward, my diet is going to get a lot more restrictive and at least temporarily I may not be able to try any of the foods in the next several weeks and then again a little bit later. Um, rest assured I don't have celiac disease and um, although I don't I was really surprised at how many of you shared that you do have celiac or that you have some sort of a gluten intolerance or other dietary restriction. Many of you also asked for updates on how I was doing, how I was feeling after cutting out gluten, and uh, some, I guess, updates on my health. And that's wonderful. I'm so thankful that everyone is concerned and is interested. However, these videos are long enough already, and I don't wanna put that into here. So if you would like to follow along, or if you'd like me to share more information about what's going on with my health, and you'd like, I guess, some updates and to see how this whole thing goes for me. I'm very open to creating some separate videos for that, but I just don't feel that it's appropriate to put in here with this project. Um, and with that said, I so much appreciate all of your support and your understanding, and let's get into the kitchen and get on with this project. We have washed our apples, and now we're going to polish them. And... At first, I'm like, why do I need to polish the apples? What, why do they need to be shiny on the outside? And then I was reading the description about cutting the ends off and cutting it into points. And I remember the last time we cut the apples up and did not listen to the points. I didn't understand that. And you guys explained I was supposed to hollow the apple out, but leave the skin and then serve the salad back inside this apple. Um, so... Uh, we're gonna get it right this time. Also, how cute is the embroidering on this little towel? I think I'm gonna cut the top end off so it can sit on the bottom. I think that will look better. And let's use this one for that. Oh, yeah, that's gonna be so much easier. I forgot I had this little one too. Your little balls. Maybe. Yeah, isn't that cute? The mayonnaise that we're using for this is from the recipe that Haley sent over. I made this one with sesame oil instead of with olive oil. If you'd like to see us make that, I'll link a video up here. It's just a, a quick one in the mayonnaise series, but it's not too bad. That's what we're gonna use today for this Waldorf salad. Oh, 
Well, there's definitely going to be way more salad than there are salad cups, but that's, yeah, that's kind of cute. The flour that we're using to thicken does have arrowroot in it, so hopefully that will still thicken this well. We might just need to add a little bit more. heaped my tablespoon here. So let's dissolve it. I don't know if I'm gonna wait the full five minutes because it seems every time I wait the length of time in which it's been suggested I ruin whatever I am making. So I am determined to do it correctly this time and actually it looks like this is already uh, thickening. So we're gonna just immediately get going here our scalded milk. And yeah, that is thick already. I really hope this is not just a chunky mess. Trying to be a little aggressive with the whisking so that I break up all of that gelatin in there. The foamy areas are starting to thicken up. The middle isn't, and it's leaving kind of like lumps in here. And so I think, given that, I'm going to add the vanilla and the whipped cream so that it doesn't become too lumpy. Maybe the lumps will incorporate. Oh, and right there, I think right there it thickened up. All right, it looks like this might turn out okay. In order to adjust for myself, I'll just fill this glass with only the Bavarian cream and not add the lady fingers. And then I will, I'm going to give one of these to someone off camera that's willing to give me their opinion, but just not be on camera for it. And I'll let you know what they think with the lady fingers. I think I'm gonna put down a layer of the cream first and that way it'll stabilize lady fingers. Much better.
I know I might be reading this wrong, but with this recipe, it lists all the ingredients first and then gives instructions. And it lists a half a cup of tomatoes. At the bottom of the recipe, it specifies if you're using uh, fresh tomatoes, you need to scald them, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I'm thinking maybe they mean a half a cup of tomatoes after they've been processed and not half a cup of fresh tomatoes because this is a half cup and one tomato is about a half a cup in there. So I'm guessing this is not gonna be enough for a tomato bisque with the rest of the ingredients. So I'm going to do a half a cup of what has been processed from these fresh tomatoes. everything in half for this recipe so that we didn't have too many leftovers just in case it doesn't turn out but I didn't just estimate how much a half of a third of a cup would be I did it by weight so this is a sixth of a cup my yeast really doesn't seem to be bubbling so I think I'm going to redo it but put just a little bit of sugar in here and see if that helps feed it a little bit but overall I either my yeast is this yeast is now dead which is fine I have other yeast for this we're using Bob's Red Mill one-to-one -one. I have one cup because we have cut this in half many of you said before that it takes a little while longer for gluten-free flour to hydrate so this resting, rising time, hopefully that'll be good to help hydrate this flour better. We are looking nice and doubled up in there. And, oh yeah, it's, I'm not sure how much extra of the flour we'll have to add. It does say it's a one-to-one -one ratio. I'm not sure though. We're just going to sift some more flour into here and mix it until it seems like it's ready. As many of you pointed out, we don't need to knead this because there is no gluten in it. So we'll just mix it until it's ready or it seems to be fully incorporated and then we'll let it rise again. So the, the texture isn't ideal here and maybe it'll turn out okay, but it seems a little flaky kind of. Maybe I put a little too much flour in, I'm not sure, but we're just gonna go with what we have here and try it out. Now, I was going to do both regular and gluten-free rolls this time around and I decided not to because I think in two weeks these rolls are on the menu again and I may have somebody available at that time to try some of the foods and that way they can take the uh, they can try the rolls and let us know what they think and they can take them home with them and we are brushing with butter we didn't do that last time uh, and you several of you let me know that we should brush them with butter before we fold them over and so we are doing that that this time and greasing up our little handle here
We were very lucky to find in our freezer, we had some round steak left over. We bought a quarter of a cow a little while ago and I need to go through and organize all of our freezer space and pantry space and um, that'll be coming, a new project coming up. But what I didn't manage to find was a metal tenderizer. So we're gonna use this for now and if it isn't, doing the job well enough, we're gonna try out the edge of a plate because that seems kind of fun. Right. I have my gluten-free flour here and I'm not having this. I'm making a decent bit of this because I think I have a feeling this will be good and we'll end up eating all of the leftovers for this in the next few days. to me that I put way too much oil in this. It was only supposed to be like a tablespoon or something like that. Um, and I put in a lot more than that. And so there also isn't a ton of space in here. So what I'm going to do to remedy that is to flip this here shortly, remove it, let this cool a little bit and drain some of the fat to cook the rest of the steak over here and then we'll start on the next steps. Now, I don't know if it is the type of flour or if it's the milk or a reaction of both or if this is just how it would turn out but that does not look very appetizing. And this definitely did not thicken. So I will try to add some of the gluten-free flour to thicken it up, and hopefully that will work out. If you wanna start eating on your own, you can. So something I noticed about this even before, and I've had Swiss steak before, and if I recall correctly, the gravy or the sauce that it's served with, the gravy that it's served with, is typically a little lumpier than I think I normally see gravy. But I don't know, I think maybe I'll run, should I run this through a sieve to get some of these lumps out? Because it's not pretty. I suppose pretty isn't the most important, but it really doesn't look super appetizing. All right, everyone, we're ready to try everything. First things first, we are starting off with the soup. This is a tomato bisque. My, I was a little surprised at the color of this bisque because my expectation was tomato, it would be a lot more red. Maybe not as red as a tomato soup, but maybe uh, a little more pink. And it's mostly white, if you can see that, with a little bit of pink and some little tiny pink flecks in there. But let's give it a smell. It smells vaguely of tomato, but not strong. I think the flavor is really good in this soup. It doesn't taste strong like tomato to me. In fact, if I didn't know that there was tomato in there, I might not realize that this was supposed to be a tomato bisque. I might just assume it was some type of a cream-based soup. Um, something that I have some other people trying this today off camera and giving their opinions. And I have to agree with their opinion of the texture of the soup now. This is probably uh, not a fault of the recipe. This is likely a fault of either the type of flour that I used or maybe I just didn't give it long enough to cook, but the soup is not thick at all. Like it's supposed to be thickened, it's a bisque, and it is very thin. Um, I can taste the flour in it and 
It, it adds a really nice a buttery, floury, seasoned flavor, but it just is not thick like a bisque should be. And again, that's a, a fault, I think, of a user end issue and not a recipe issue. Not a bad way to start this, and I think it would pair, it's going to end up pairing well with everything else here. Next up is the Swiss steak, but before I get started with that, look at how cute my plate is. It's a little sectioned bubble plate. Isn't that adorable? Okay, now let's try the food. We have our main course here. We have the Swiss steak, mashed potatoes, creamed peas, and we have our hot rolls. So what do you all think? How do you think they turned out this time appearance wise? I, I feel proud of what I did this time with these. I know it was a little different. I didn't have to knead it. Things were uh, much different circumstances than the first time that I did it, but I'm pretty proud of how these turned out so far. I might change my mind once I bite into this, but uh, appearance wise, I, I feel like I've come a long way. Overall, looking at this plate, it's <laughs> just the general colors are a little um, muted brown. It might be the color of something that you remember at certain times with your baby, um, maybe changing time. It's, it's not very appetizing looking, but if we call it rustic or primitive, like uh, you guys have suggested before, it gives a whole new meaning to it, I think, and maybe it looks more appetizing that way. The steak feels kind of tender, I think. Let's try it out and see. It smells pretty good. I think I did an okay job pounding away at this steak. It is relatively tender. The potatoes, I imagine these are going to be good. They're gonna taste like a mashed potato. And I've been neglecting these poor potatoes for like the last five meals because we always have potatoes. So we did include them this time. It tastes like a mashed potato. That's pretty great. It goes well with this steak. Um, when I was younger, my Mima, my other grandmother, made two meals that I remember, and she was very, very poor growing up, and when she had her first, or when she had her children, they were pretty poor, and she would make what she called creamed peas, which in my memory, she just put a can of peas in a bowl and kind of squished them up with milk and salt and pepper, and also macaroni and milk, the same concept, boiled macaroni, poured a little milk over top of it. They, I don't think they had cheese. And so just a little salt and pepper, and that's what you had. And so this isn't exactly the same. There's no milk or cream in these creamed peas, a lot of butter, but yeah, those are very tasty. They taste like a canned pea. Now, many of you, when we've had canned peas before, have given your strong opinions. There's a lot of people on both ends of the spectrum. Some of you hate canned peas. You will hate this. Some of you, like me, really love canned peas. You're going to love this. Uh, I think it goes well with the rest of this, and I think this recipe, along with the other two so far, are a win. My off-camera person has given their opinion on the meal. They think the steak was really good. They really like the mashed potatoes and they said they're normally not a pea person. They don't really like canned peas. However, this particular recipe they did enjoy and would eat again. And they also felt that everything went well. They said they were saving some of it to stack up together and try all together. And everything mixed was really good together as well. Now let's give these rolls a try go ahead and see it and let's crack into it similar to the rolls before or maybe it was the biscuits before 
Ooh, it smells really good, but it doesn't give the appearance of being as done as what I am used to. And I don't know if that's normal or if they just take a little extra baking time than regular flour, but it smells fantastic. My mouth was watering while these were in the oven. I could smell them baking and they smelled amazing. Let's give it a try. I think that's really good. The texture is obviously different. It's a little more dense and not as, it has a different type of chew to it. The difference when you have a gummy, oh, when we made those candies before, it's the difference between if you have kind of a light chewy gummy compared to something that has a like maybe a little more natural, has maybe more gelatin in it and is a little firmer. This has just a firmer chew than a regular roll. I really like it that way. And I bet it's gonna be really good with this gravy. Let's try it. Oh yeah, I know it suggests mixing it with butter or serving it. Sorry, I'm chewing or talking with my mouth full. That's rude. I hate when people do that. Um, this It's suggested that this is with butter, but and butter is like my favorite food. However, this goes really well with this gravy and would make a really nice shovel to, I think, pick up the rest of what has been left behind on the plate, all the gravy, all the leftover cream from the creamed peas. This is the perfect vehicle to finish that off. So yeah, we did an amazing job. All right, my off camera help for those Parker House rolls also really, really enjoyed them. And they described the texture as almost kind of like a spongy texture a little bit, but they really enjoyed the flavor, the texture, all of it. Um, and you can nod yes or no. Would you have known that those were gluten-free if I didn't tell you? Yeah, no idea that those were gluten-free if we didn't talk about it. And here is our adorable little Waldorf salad. And I know, I'm pretty sure I mentioned earlier that the mayonnaise that we made was from Haley's recipe and that we substituted the type of oil in it. I use sesame oil for this instead. And I think that that kind of nutty oil flavor will go well with this salad. So let's see, let's first, all of the smells blend really well together. You certainly smell the apple first, but the walnut and the mayonnaise are in there as well. I don't smell the celery strong, but it also is maybe on the bottom there. Maybe I would smell it if it was sitting more on top. Right. Wanna make sure to get a little apple, a little walnut, and a little celery. While I'm still not a fan, of mayonnaise in general and fruit salads with mayonnaise on them. Of all the combinations that we've had so far, I think this is the best one. And the presentation is adorable. The flavor, I think just, it kind of mixes well, particularly if you like these types of flavors together, I think you would really enjoy this. The mayonnaise isn't overwhelming and the rest of it, the celery doesn't come out too strong. The nuts don't come out too strong. The apple, I think everything is balanced really well with this. Uh, now my off camera help is eating it differently than I am. They are taking a cut here, cutting in between the little points and eating it as a slice that way. <clears throat> And so I imagine that the apple flavor is probably a little bit stronger there, but let me get their opinion and I'll get back to you. I had my off camera help try it both ways without the extra apple in it, just scooped out of the middle. And then again with the extra apple and they said it, it does make it slightly more apple-y, I guess. Um, but it, it doesn't make it the predominant flavor. Everything else is still very balanced. 
and they, if someone served it to them, they would happily eat it. They said it's very interesting and different. Maybe not their first choice of things to eat and try again, but not bad. All right, last but not least is our dessert. This is the Bavarian cream with lady fingers. Obviously mine does not have the lady fingers in it. And so that's going to make a difference in the texture and overall flavor of this. However, I am going to give my opinion on this Bavarian cream. Now, any other time that we have worked with gelatin before, it typically does not turn out well. It goes from uh, completely liquid to all of a sudden solid in a matter of a breath. And it, it happened again this time, but not quite as bad as before. And so I'm hoping it's not quite as lumpy as normal. It smells very much like vanilla. It smells good. I can tell that the gelatin was not completely incorporated seamlessly, but overall, it's very barely noticeable to me. And the Bavarian cream kind of just, for me, tastes, looks, feels like very thick whipped cream. I could see having this in uh, my coffee, on a dessert, on another pumpkin pie. This could be used just as an elevated whipped cream in just about anything. I think this was a great recipe. Uh, let me have my off-camera help. Let us know what they think of it with the cherry and the lady fingers. My opinion giver on the other side of the camera said that they were a little surprised. It smells very flavorful. They were expecting it to be a lot more sweet and to have more of a vanilla flavor. I think they said the lady fingers, they, it has a little bit of a sugar crust on the outside and it's a little sweeter with that incorporated in there. But overall, they said it's kind of hard to tell you're even eating anything um, because it there just isn't a lot of anything to taste in it. And so I think this maybe would be better off as a topping on something instead of the main dessert if you're used to a lot more flavor. If you're used to not quite as much and you like things a little more delicate, then I think this would be fabulous. Overall, I thought as a general meal, this went quite well together. I think it was a little bit heavy. Everything was either creamed or had butter or mayonnaise or something in there that was just a little bit heavier. I would have liked for myself to have something a little lighter, a little more acidic, something to kind of brighten this meal up. Flavor wise, I would give this maybe a seven or eight out of 10, but balance wise, I might give this a five. It needed just something that was a little bit contrasting for me. Nutrition wise, we I think we talked about this last week, we're still a little bit low on vegetables here. We have a starchy vegetable in our peas. And other than that, there's fruit in the Waldorf salad and I guess some celery in the Waldorf salad, but otherwise we're running a little bit low here. This is a little higher in fat and a little bit lower in those fruits and vegetables in that fiber, more than I would like to see normally. Cost-wise, the most expensive part of this in the normal realm of things is the meat. And I am i can't remember what we paid for this, I guess, overall average when we bought this quarter cow. But I will say I went and picked some up otherwise as a backup just in case maybe this was freezer burnt or something and wasn't going to work out. And for, I think, one steak, it was about seven dollars so for six people i'm estimating the meat would have been eh, maybe 25 dollars maybe 30. so overall for everything for this meal for six people i'm thinking we're looking at 50 to 60 dollars 
Thank you so much for being here with us today. And if you liked what you saw and want to join us again next week, we'll be having a cold leg of lamb and we'll also be attempting apple pudding with tapioca. And if you haven't yet and you're interested, you'd like to kind of go further into the conversation about these foods, maybe about foods that you remember when you were younger and want to connect a little bit stronger with this community, you can join our Facebook group, which will be linked in the description below. And we'll see you guys next week. What if these are our teeth? <laughs>